Burlington, Washington, a quiet, peaceful community about an hour north of Seattle, an unlikely setting for a battleground, but that's exactly what it has become. On a recent night, hundreds of parents, teachers, and students gathered at the local high school because of biology teacher Roger DeHart. Already I'm being chastised or criticized that somehow my students can't understand for 15 years, DeHart has been a popular teacher at Burlington High School. Now, he's under fire for his teaching of evolution. Based on Darwinian evolution, or based on evolution, we would say that which ones would be the fittest? I think it's Im very important for students to understand evolution. I think it's important that uh, I teach students uh, evolution and that they understand it so that they'll be successful in universities if they choose to go on. Well, I love biology. I, uh, the thing that intrigues me was just the different habitats and ecosystems and things like that. I was intrigued by that. I love being out there. And so I had a real love for biology. The more I learn about the complexity of life, genetics and the human genome and uh, the idea of this uh, information in the cell. I think it's fascinating. What is the mechanism? How but the heart's passion for biology is tempered by frustration. Book, right? Frustration that students aren't learning enough about evolution. According to the heart, teachers and textbooks are not presenting an accurate representation of evolutionary theory. Either some of the current leading research is being left out, so it's dated, or else it's just plain misrepresented. Because of his desire for students to learn accurate science, DeHart decided to supplement the standard unit on evolution with additional materials. Then someone complained. A citizens group was organized. Groups from outside the community began to lobby the school district, and the dispute became an issue in school board elections. The controversy polarized Burlington. Widely discussed trial of the 20s, the Darwin case, July 24th, 1925. Of course, this is not the first time evolution has divided a community. Back in the 1920s, Dayton, Tennessee prosecuted high school teacher John Scopes for teaching evolution to students in violation of state law. Remember today as a classic battle pitting religious fundamentalists against defenders of science and academic freedom. The Scopes trial continues to affect how we view the controversy over evolution in the schools. According to defense attorneys, was the right to teach what science had found factual. But there is one important and unexpected difference between John Scopes and Roger DeHart. Scopes was a proponent of evolution. DeHart is not. And those who are trying to censor him from teaching too much about evolution are not religious fundamentalists. They are supporters of Darwin's theory. I think American schools teach too little about evolution. I think that a lot of the information regarding evolution is taught uncritically. Does natural selection provide you with more information? They're not asking students to really examine the evidence given and to ask whether or not that's a plausible explanation. It's more or less regurgitate the facts, regurgitate what we've told you and don't question, because if you question, that means that you must have a religious belief, and uh, that must motivate your objections to, to evolution, rather than the science. Caught in the middle of that clash and the shouting match... The heart situation the caught the awareness of the national press, setting off a frenzy of media attention. The ACLU disagreed.